we don't need show. We don't need, um, you know, lights and smoke and mirrors. We don't need more stories. We need the Bible. And so we're excited to bring that type of North Creek style preaching and teaching and worship and classroom experience to this community uh, along with biblical counseling. So we're excited about that. This day could not get here fast enough. I'm so pumped for what the Lord's doing here with pastors John and John, the two Johns, and it's just so grateful for what John just shared in the video. You could have taken two hours to share all the ways that God's been at work in your life, your life. I mean, it's just a remarkable story of God's grace. So it is a delight to be here this morning, and I wanted to make sure that you know that I'm not preaching. Pastor John is preaching. I'm just doing the installation of John Jordan to be the senior pastor of this church. That's my task. And I'm delighted to help fulfill that by turning our attention to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11 through 16. And you can open your Bibles if you'd like. I will only be several minutes. So that's what they all say. 1 Timothy 4, 11 through 16. Prescribe and teach these things. Let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity, show yourself an example to those who believe. Until I come, give attention to the public reading of the scripture, to exhortation, and to the teaching. Do not neglect the spiritual gift within you, which was bestowed on you through prophetic utterance with the laying on of hands by the presbytery, by the elders. Take pains with these things. Be absorbed in them so that your progress will be evident to everyone. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in these things, for as you do this, you will ensure salvation both for yourself and for those who hear you. These are the marks of a godly pastor, the kind of pastor that we know is being installed here at Christ Church of the Valley today. And for those of you who are here, I just want you to hear the marks of the man that God has called here, okay? And I'll just keep talking and they can address that, all right? First mark you see in verse 11 is that the godly pastor is to prescribe and teach the truth of God's word. That's in verse 11. This is strong language from Paul to Timothy. Why does he say it like this? This double command to prescribe and to teach the truth. Because Paul knew that Timothy was going to have to insist on the truth in the demonstration of biblical authority. So John, remember that your ministry comes with God-given authority. To teach God's truth. And as soon as you step outside of God's truth, you lose your authority. Christ Church, you are to recognize and to follow John's leadership in this way, along with Pastor John McNeff. This is the first mark of a godly pastor. The second mark is to set a godly example to the believers here. And you'll see there in verse 12, five different ways that's supposed to happen. To set a godly example, first of all, with godly speech. You see that there? This refers not to public speaking, preaching. That's earlier in the chapter, chapter 4, verse 2, preach the word. No, no, this is everyday conversation. And for context on this, you can go back to Ephesians chapter five, 4, where we find the ways that we're supposed to speak to one another. And that is in verses 25 through 32, to speak truthfully, patiently, humbly, and graciously in day-to-day -day conversations. And you're going to find that to be the case with John Jordan and John McNeff. Praise the Lord for that. But that's what it means to set a godly example, as well as with godly conduct. Godly conduct. I think it's true to say that you're going to find that this is a, a man who, who will practice what he preaches. He will be an example for you to follow. There is what one Puritan said here, a harmony of pastoral preaching with pastoral practice in life. And that is the second mark there of what it means to set an example, to also model godly love. You see that right in the middle of the list of those five things, don't you? Verse 12, and it's not surprising to find love lodged right in the heart of the list of being a godly example. And you're going to find that heart in Pastor John for the flock here. John, I just want to encourage you to make the centerpiece of this list the centerpiece of your ministry, to love the flock that Christ died to save. And then to model godly faith as well. In the pastoral epistles, faith almost always means faithfulness or trustworthiness. 
And so here is the example of God calling a man to live faithfully out the charge that he's been tasked to him by God. And then the last way to carry out a godly example as a pastor is to model godly purity. Look, you know, a thousand sermons can be undone with one impure act. So there must be moral purity in the life of the pastor. This is probably the area of greatest concern and greatest protection and the way that you can set the greatest example, John, in your life. And Denise, right alongside of you. So John, set an example to the church body in this way. Um, prescribe and teach the truth, these first two marks. The third mark is to devote yourself to the word. Verse 13 says that, that happens in three ways. Number one, with the public reading of the word of God in the corporate worship service. You'll see this as a hallmark of this church. The Bible will be read out loud every Sunday. And that's because of this text. It can either be reading the text of the sermon, or it can be reading the text of the scripture in a different place in the Bible. Either way, the scripture must be read out loud. That is the beginning of your word work, John. And then after that, to exhort the people of God. And to take God's word and drive it home to the church's mind, their inclination, their will, is the task of the preacher. And so John will renew your mind in the truth. He will soften your heart with the doctrines of grace. He will drive your will towards Christ. The public ministry of the word in the worship service must include exhortation. And then finally, attention to the public teaching. In your Bibles, it says to teaching, but in the Greek, it says to the teaching, meaning a body of doctrine that needs to be taught from the word of God. There must be teaching in your preaching. And I know you know this and are committed to this. And in doing that, you will give them life-giving, sound doctrine. So that's the third mark to give attention to the word. The fourth mark is to cultivate your giftedness. And those of you who know John know that he's gifted for the work of gospel ministry. But you have to pay attention to your gift, right? Look at verse 14. If you don't, if you don't use it, you lose it. And so we want to be careful to have uh, John have time to, to give to just sharpening his giftedness, to grow in it. And to do that, we want to even begin by affirming before you this morning the installation of a man who has been gifted by God for the work of ministry. That's what this installation element is about. And you'll see that in verse 14, to cultivate your gift. The fifth mark of a godly pastor is in verse 15, to absorb yourself in the work, to absorb yourself in the work. That happens with meditation, taking pains is what the Bible says there in that translation. It means to cultivate or to meditate upon uh, God's word. And so let the pastor do his sermon prep that's what that means. So he can soak in God's word. And once God's word gets into him, then it will get into you through him. And that's what you want, right? So let him absorb himself in the work of the word. And then the last thing I'd say about that little mark is that you have to let him make progress. Folks, look, I don't know how long this is going to take for you to realize this, but the pursuit of the pastor is not perfection. In this verse, it's progression. You just want to make progress. Do not hold them to the standard of perfection. That's not what blamelessness means in the elder qualifications of 1 Timothy 3 and Titus 1. So Paul is holding this man to a high standard. The scriptures do. But the standard's progression in the faith, not perfection in the faith. And so we need to make sure we extend that grace to him and then the last and final mark, the sixth mark of a godly pastor, is to watch your life and doctrine carefully. To keep a close watch on your life and doctrine. And John, I gotta tell you, one of your greatest allies is sitting in the front row with you. And one of your other greatest allies is also sitting in the front row with you. And so you've got two significant allies with you, as well as all of us, right? From, from North Creek and the folks who are here at Christ Church, we want to help you so that the promise of that verse comes to pass so that you will ensure the salvation of both yourself and those who will hear you bring the word of God. You know that doesn't mean salvation by works. That's not what that means. It means salvation by grace through faith alone in Christ alone. We would affirm that loudly from the Bible. What this does refer to is you will help the saints persevere all the way to the end. The perseverance of the saints. And so these are the marks of a godly pastor, everyone. This is the man that we're installing at this church. Someone who is commanding, prescribing, and teaching sound doctrine. Someone who is setting an example for the church with his life. Someone who's devoting himself to the ministry of the word. Someone who's cultivating his giftedness and has been gifted. Someone who's absorbing himself in the work of the ministry. 
And then last of all, someone who will continue to watch his life and his doctrine carefully. So this is the mark of a man that God will use to pastor this church. And it's been my prayer that God would, by his grace, bring all of this text to pass in the life of this man. And that all of that will be for the benefit and for the edification of this church. And all of that might be for the exaltation of Christ. And all of that for the glorification of not just the Son of God, but of God the Father and the power of the Spirit. This is day number one in the life of this church. But I'm praying for a long, sweet season of faithful gospel ministry here. Under the care of the great shepherd, Jesus Christ, that's true. And under him, the care of this shepherd, John Jordan and John McNeff. So we want to do what we see the Bible calling us to in this passage, and that is to lay hands on John Jordan and to install him officially, formally, biblically to the office of senior pastor. So I've asked some elders from North Creek to come on up, as well as Lola, who's going to be a deacon in training. And Lola, come on up at this church. You will be a deacon in training. There's Lola. And then also Phil. Where's Phil? Come on up, Phil. Elder in training as well. John, why don't you come on up? And John McNeff as well. And all of us, John, if you want to stand here, or wherever you want to stand, this, this is your church, bro. You stand wherever you want to. <laughs> Is that good? You like it there? Okay, good. Let's try to gather around him as much as we can. Actually, John, if you want to take a half step forward for the sake of the other guys, yeah. That's good. All right. And I, I'd like to ask uh, John McNeff if you would pray, and then I'll pray as well. It seems fitting to have that be the case. So, John, while we lay our hands on John Jordan, and John, would you pray, and then I'll pray after you. Father, we thank you for the privilege of knowing you, first of all. <clears throat> Every one of us is a miracle of grace. If every one of us who knows you goes back in our life and sees what we were before we knew, we were, we were lost and hopeless. The Bible says that our heart was hostile towards you. It was only when your Holy Spirit came in, touched our heart, gave us a heart of flesh, that we began to consider the things of God, repented of our sin, confessed that Jesus is God, and then we're introduced into the family of God by your Spirit. So, Father, beyond that, we think that you've left the church in this world to model what it means to be men and women who will walk forward in faithfulness. Thank you, Father, now for John. Thank you that in the four or five years that I've known him, I've seen that modeled in his life. I've seen his enthusiasm for you. I've seen his diligence in studying the Word of God, even with a busy schedule of running a business, and still his commitment to the Word of God is the paramount thing that runs his life. Father, thank you for the example that he has been to me to see that in his life and to see that it's not just a glad-handing preacher who's interested in the smoke and mirrors, but someone who really wants to communicate the word of God here. So I thank you for that. I pray that you would bless his ministry. I pray that you would give him the time and the continuing inclination to spend time in your word. So as he spends time, he will feed the flock wisely from your book. So we thank you for that. We commend him now to you. Thank you, Father, for what this moment represents. We thank you for the life that you have called to yourself by your grace in John, Jordan. Thank you for the ways that you have not just caused him to repent and believe in the gospel, but also be sanctified by that same gospel from the first day of his new life until now. Thank you, God, for the ways that you have equipped this man and gifted this man for the work of gospel ministry. We have seen this. Uh, at North Creek Church, and we are delighted now to see this continue to move forward here at Christ Church. God, thank you for his marriage and family. I do pray that you would help his marriage to continue to grow, and his love for his wife and the love that his wife, Denise, has for him would just continue to only be strengthened and deepened in the midst of this launch. God, we pray for faithfulness and gospel ministry along all the fronts we just were reminded of from your word. Make this man, God, a man who is faithful to exercise the work of the ministry that you've called him to. And Lord, we are grateful to be able to partner with him, to be able to see how it is that we might be able to continue to come alongside and serve and help out where we can and to be a blessing so that this work can not just be launched, but be established and not just be established here in Vacaville, but grow for the sake of drawing, as John said a couple weeks or last week, and many of those whom you have appointed to believe, to believe. God, we do think that there are many that you have in this city 
that are not yet saved, but will be saved by the preaching of the gospel here. So God, draw those people here and then draw them by your sovereign grace home to faith in Christ. And use your word, God, held high. Use the gospel proclaimed. Use this man humbled, but set afire. God, use John McNeff in the same way. Use the Phil and, and Lola and Tyler and others who are joining in to continue that work and to fast forward it and move it forward. God, I thank you so much for all that you're doing here. And we do, uh, Lord, with great thankfulness, officially and formally, according to your word, install this man to the office of pastor and senior pastor. Thank you for this man and for his ministry. We pray all of this in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. Amen.